Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Having Your Friends School's virtual open house. I'm Devin Schlickman, the Director of Admission, and I'm so pleased you're joining us today on this beautiful day. Thank you for carving out a little bit of time for us. And as we look at this beautiful slide, our meeting house on campus, I would like to begin our program with a brief moment of silence and stillness in the manner of friends. And we will break the silence today in a very special way with an original poem from one of our students. Hi, I'm Sydney Brown, the Youth Poet Laureate of Philadelphia and junior here at Abington Friends. This is a poem I wrote entitled, My Dream. I have a dream that our words will build a bridge of unity, that our voices will no longer be meek, that faces will not be overlooked from first sight. Instead, treated with respect and equality. I have a dream that my race won't affect me getting past the finish line, that there will be no more firsts because the firsts have already happened. I have a dream that everyone will put down their phones, take a look at somebody and really take in their glory without a screen. I have a dream that my gender won't change my opportunities, that people can see I can get the same job done as anybody, that my gender doesn't make me more vulnerable to be taken advantage of. I have a dream that people can walk out of their house without feeling troubled they won't make it back home, that people can wake up and feel alive never thinking otherwise. I have a dream that my religion won't measure my trust, but my words will evaluate the truth. I have a dream that the children of the world will make change together and not compete for titles so that generation after generation won't have to repeat the same phrase you are the hope, you are the future. I have a dream that we will all understand that you can be you and I can be me, but we can all come together as one big community. This is my dream, thank you. I will let those beautiful and passionate words stand on their own and simply say how thankful I truly am that we have Sydney as a student and a member of our community here at AFS. We are truly blessed by her talent. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, in just a few minutes, you'll hear from our head of school, Rich Nori. Following that, Rich will moderate a conversation among four of our upper school students. Then to conclude the afternoon, you'll each have the opportunity to join the lower, middle, or upper school breakout sessions where you'll hear from our students and teachers and division directors, and you'll have the chance for a Q&A with that group. Uh, right now though, I wanna share a short video that I hope gives you a sense of the excitement and energy that our students experience each day at AFS. At Abington Friends School, I'm encouraged to ask big questions. I study interesting things like art, science, and Spanish. And I also play in an awesome playground every day. I love my teachers here at Abington Friends. Everyone here is really smart, nice, and they care about me. I get to build, create, and discover new things every day about myself. Middle school is different and unique. Here at AFS, it starts in fifth grade and goes all the way up until eighth grade. Middle school is in the center of high school and lower school, so it's like the bridge to bring us together. There's a sense of academic freedom here. I enjoy class discussions where everybody's voice gets to be heard. We collectively go to Quaker meeting for worship every week and we get to sit in quiet and reflect. 
I am in class with teachers and students from different zip codes and different backgrounds. It's because of this that I have an appreciation for different perspectives and a knack for helping all these complexities come together. I feel very supported here at Abington Friends School, and my goals are supported by my parents, advisor, and teachers. Everyone here at Abington Friends School has helped me achieve daily successes, which has made this experience exciting, fulfilling, and enjoyable. I feel like I have a team rallying for me each day. I know what it is like to problem solve and collaborate, and I feel very ready for college and my future. We have a history extending over 300 years, and yet there is an air of possibility for the future here at Abington Friends School. If you're anything like me, that video brought a longing for mask-free days and the opportunity for us to all see each other smile every day. And we'll get there soon. Um, but right now, to share a deeper understanding of the AFS values in our community, I'll turn it over to our head of school, Rich Norrie. It's all yours, Rich. Thank you, Devin. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to uh, welcome you here and host this experience for you. Uh, we love sharing this school community with pr prospective families. And so uh, my role is to share some of the larger elements and big ideas that draw us together as a community and make it such a cumulatively powerful place for students and families. And so, yes, we're a friend school, and that means that we are in education in the rich academic and intellectual tradition of friends education. And if I had to name the central idea um, at the heart of Quaker pedagogy or how we teach, it is that we are constantly searching for a deeper sense of understanding and teaching kids to, to actively in multiple ways seek to deepen their understanding of no matter what we're talking about, um, whether it's in the arts, in the sciences, in decoding history, uh, in making sense of literature, we're always seeking deeper understanding. And it starts with the idea that our understanding of anything at all, no matter what we're talking about, is incomplete at best, but it can be made more complete. And so we teach three really key skills to help kids develop the active habits of seeking deeper understanding. One is in recognizing that it's a resource rich world that there are lots of uh, places, resources, resources, people, expertise available today to students more so than any other generation in human history. And so teaching kids to be resourceful, how to reach out and find the things that will help them do high quality work and help them deepen their understanding is a major part of the academic program at AFS. Another piece uh, that I think is an active practice in every part of our life every day at school is skilled collaborative inquiry figuring things out together from multiple perspectives. Um, all we do every day in school is try to figure things out. Uh, as faculty and staff, we're trying to figure out what's going on with this child right now and how can we help? What should be in the ninth grade English curriculum? But in the classroom, um, we're helping children use multiple perspective in a skilled way to challenge assumptions that may be hidden, um, to dig deeper, to incorporate perspectives from uh, points of view that are different than their own, um, to learn to speak clearly what one knows and know more than that. Um, and it's a combination of rigorous honesty and humility that allows us to build a deeper understanding from multiple perspectives. And being a profoundly diverse community definitely helps in that, in that seeking to understand the world better. And then finally, reflection is a major piece of how we uh, seek to deepen understanding in a friend's school. And um, we take time to be quiet. Uh, because out of that quiet emerges connections between ideas. Um, it takes time for ideas to form, for connections to be made. Um, and it's a noisy and busy world that we live in. Taking time at the beginning of a class to settle into silence, to simply marshal our attention and focus ourselves for what's next, or to stop in the middle of a really complex conversation to allow that to happen. That spaciousness in the day, in the classroom, to help settle and ground and create deeper understanding is another important part. Other major pieces of the academic curriculum, um, we're a school that's all about words, reading and writing. Uh, that runs through every single part of our program. And so students here learn to write 
in a variety of genres from persuasive to analytic, analytical prose, poetry. Um, we love the world of words and we love the way that it helps children refine their ideas and communicate effectively. It's labor intensive for teachers and for students, but it runs through every part of our program. Research, analysis, and a full immersion in the arts are other big parts of our program. Uh, another thing that's important to us is a breadth of daily experiences um, for kids. Um, as children are growing, so are their minds, so are their bodies, and, uh, and, and different types of experiences are like fuel and nourishment to that process. So we want every day kids to have not only experiences in the classroom, but also outdoors, uh, in the art studios, in movement, in athletics, um, and, uh, and outside of our, the walls of our school as well. We are really connected to uh, a rich strand of experiential education in our program. And we think that breadth of experience is really important for, for children rather than narrowness. Um, this is a place of profound respect for each other um, where we make room um, for the variety of people who are here. Um, and we encourage students, not just to be students of accomplishment, um, but, but students of significance in the community, people who are relied upon, who learn to take initiative, who are given leadership roles, who are depended upon. And so uh, once again, being a widely diverse community and one of deep respect and, and curiosity about each other um, and learning constantly from each other is a big part of this experience. I'd like to emphasize too, that this is a culture of excellence that is much more about collaboration than competition. Our students are enriched by each other's gifts and successes rather than diminished by them. And I think that that's a beautiful quality and a very healthy quality of this community. We're a place that explores ideas that matter. The real world is constantly pressing itself in upon the lives of our students um, in everyday uh, current events, in the political scene, um, in some of the ugliness that the world brings to our doorstep. And we think it's really important for students to have their education help them make sense of that outside world and not just inside uh, a separate um, uh, world from, from that, that that used to be school. Um, school today needs to be connected to the outside world because essentially we want students to become engaged with the world around them, come to know it, be intensely curious about it, uh, be confident in their exploration of it, and begin to see and find their place in it, the roles that they will play, the work that they will do to make a more just and equitable um, community here at AFS and beyond. Um, and we're a broadly defined spiritual community as a friend school. You know, uh, very few folks at a friend school are Quaker, only four or five percent. And others come from a variety of traditions and, and non-traditions, religiously and spiritually. But being a spiritual community means that we allow ourselves to talk about the deeper aspects and inner life that each one of us carries. Um, we live in, in, uh, in a life that is mysterious, um, that is miraculous, um, and that is a lifelong journey of coming to understand uh, uh, what we're meant to do and what's important in this world. And having the language of the spirit and creating time and space to allow oneself to get more familiar with one's inner life in the quiet of the meeting house and discover that source of uh, un unending strength, uh, peace and tranquility at the heart of each one of us, uh, that's an important part of an AFS education. Then the final thing I'll say in describing the school is uh, it's an unusual blend of informality and high expectations. And I love that, that blend of our community. The informality you'll see in the fact that teachers are often called by their first names, um, that relationships are, are casual and open and uh, curious and personal in this school. And that allows people to bring their whole selves to the school experience and learn from the whole selves of other people around them. And so that informality allows for a depth and authenticity of relationships that we think is a really important part of children growing up and understanding their place in the world. It's coupled though with the sense of high expectations. If we were simply a casual place um, without high expectations, um, we wouldn't accomplish nearly the ambitious um, uh, hopes that we have for our students. High expectations, the students have high expectations for the value of the work that they're doing, for the value of their education. And teachers have high expectations for the engagement of students, uh, for their sincere interest, for their hard work. Put together, um, high expectations and the informality of genuine relationships makes for a uniquely powerful place. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, because we have uh, uh, a focus on students in this uh, open house today that is, uh, I think, really appropriate. 
because that's really what we're all about as a school. Uh, students are the expender at, at, at the center of the AFS experience. And so I'd like to introduce um, four of our upper school students who are gonna join me uh, for a few minutes of conversation before we invite you to join the, the um, uh, lower, middle and upper school breakout sessions. So I invite our students to turn on their cameras and their microphones. Hello, friends. Good to see you. Um, and so uh, the, the friends you see before you are three seniors and a junior. Um, they include Kathy Liang, who's a senior, who will wave to you. Uh, Noah uh, V, Noah Vinogradov, uh, Claire Robinson, and Daniel Woodland. And so I'm going to uh, ask a, uh, a question of each one of our students, and, uh, and they're going to uh, spend a little time telling you about uh, some aspect of their experience at AFS. So Kathy, we're going to start with you. Um, Kathy uh, is an adventurous learner uh, and, uh, and, and has a very adventurous spirit. She chose four years ago from China to pursue an education abroad uh, and, um, and came to AFS as a ninth grader. Um, during that time, um, she has um, taken advantage of lots of different parts of our program, but what's really been notable in the last couple of years that I've been observing is her deep care for uh, the environment and climate issues and really creative and innovative leadership roles that she has taken in the AFS community. So Kathy, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about your joining of the AFS community and the pathway uh, that's led to the work that you're doing right now and what that work is right now. Yes. Thank you, Rich. So my name is Kathy. I am an international student from China and I'm currently a senior at AFS. And the decision to study abroad was the most important decision I've ever made in my life. Um, when I decided to come to the US to study, I was looking at like nine schools, nine high schools all over the country. There was some schools in New York, some in California. But eventually I chose AFS because I think the core values of AF AFS community really echo with my own values. And honestly, I think four years ago, I really, I, I think everything was still like an unknown journey. But I think uh, in the past four years, I've become to see that AFS was really beyond my expectation of what high school education would look like or, who would I who I would have become after like my four years at AFS and I think just the idea that my culture and like the differences are really welcomed and appreciated at AFS have really made me feel like I belong to the community and I want to be part of the community and contribute to the community and then that leads me to the core values of the AFS education one of them being the idea of stewardship like we are all like stewards of our community and we should take care of our community of the people in it and of our environment and um just that idea of environmental stewardship has always inspired me and in my sophomore year i got the opportunity to go on a school trip with a group of my friends and we went to Yellowstone, we were, we were doing an ecology international project with the local research team at Yellowstone. And I have always been a nature lover. And then my experiences at Yellowstone was really open, like was really mind opening because we were tracking down bison herds every day and we were collecting bison feces to get them back to the lab at Yellowstone so they can study the diets of the bison herd and how the bison population at Yellowstone are really affecting all the wildlife at Yellowstone. And from that trip, I was able to see that one individual can turn the passion of the environment to some real action, and we all can really make an impact. And I then really wanted to make an impact, and I brought that passion and that goal back to AFS community. And I became the leader of the Environmental Action and Justice Club at the school. And throughout that process, I've got so much support from like faculty, from my, from my peers and like from the school administration 
I still remember the day when I scheduled a meeting to sit down with our head of the school, Rich, to discuss the usage of pesticide on campus. And we were both envisioning the prospect of building more gardens on campus. And I'm just really happy to tell you that our visions are actually coming true. And uh, one of my goals before graduation this year is to build a butterfly habitat on campus. And I think just throughout my four years at Abington Friends School, I've worked with so many peers. They're all so driven and passionate. And I've worked with also like many teachers and faculties. They have been my mentors and they have really made me into the person that I am today. And I think looking back to the past four years of my AFS journey, I have just really built so many deep and meaningful relationships with people at AFS. And I'm really beginning to see AFS as just my home. And it is really my home in the US. And AFS education and community have really made me the person that I am today. Thank you so much, Kathy. What a beautiful story. Really appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, Daniel, um, I'd like to speak with you next. Um, Daniel is someone who is a serious student um, and also somebody uh, really engaged in the athletic program. Um, and uh, what I love is when he talks about his athletic experiences, um, he talks not only about uh, the competition and, and being part of a team, but also some of the deeper connections that he's making for less, from lessons outside from the athletic program in his experience. So Daniel, I'd love for you to share an example from your academic life and from your athletic life um, that might be a window for folks into your experience at Abington Friends. So I initially came to AFS in the seventh grade. I previously spent my second to sixth grade years at an online school. So coming to AFS was a big change from not interacting with other students on a day-to-day -day basis to interacting with my teachers and other students all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm really thankful to have come to AFS because I found a welcoming community that accepted me as I was. And I was able to find friends and interest groups and various communities around the campus that I was able to connect with and make meaningful relationships with. And that has been a constant of my experience at AFS. And even now on Zoom where things are a bit different, like right now I'm doing a hybrid learning system where I come into school in person on Thursday and Friday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I only interact with the school really through Zoom. And so it's a bit different, but one of the things I'm remembering is that I'm still able to find community online. And an example of that is during one of my AP literature classes a couple of weeks ago, we were doing a project where we were analyzing poetry books, not poetry books, children's books. And we were talking about thinking about them critically using literally a literary analysis tools to like think deeply about what the author assumes we know and what the author wants us to take away from the children's books and lessons we learned. And one of the really cool things about that experience was connecting with other people in the Zoom chat and speaking out loud. I was able to witness like a lot of conversation and a lot of people's opinions and thoughts and experiences, reading books and the connections people make. And it really felt like a really awesome community experience where I got to see other people and talk and engage with other ideas. And that was a really awesome experience. And another thing is that athletics, I do track and I have been doing track for a while since winter the season started officially. And one of the things that happened in the winter was we were practicing and it was a really, really cold day one time. And so before practice started, our coach talked to us aside before we started warm ups and was like, hey, this is gonna be really cold. It's not gonna be a lot of fun, but there's gonna be a lot of benefit to it. And he explained to us the values of stoicism 
and how you can do something that's not immediately fun or might take a lot of effort and willpower to actually do it in the moment. But after doing it, you can get a lot of reward from it. And I was able to apply those lessons I learned from track in my own life because a couple weeks ago, I was doing a lot of work and I was pretty swamped, but hearkening back to lessons I learned in track, I was like, hey, I can go through something that's, oh, it's, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of effort, but at the end of the day, I know I'm gonna be better for it so I can work through it. And with that mindset, I'm able to accomplish a lot of my goals. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel, uh, of course, Stoicism is an ancient philosophy, but there's a new book out um, by a contemporary philosopher, re kind of translating and calibrating Stoicism for a contemporary uh, living. Uh, I've got to get you a copy of that book. I will do that. Um, next up is Claire uh, Robinson. Claire has been with us since seventh grade. Am I right about that, Claire? And um, one thing that um, we've always known about Claire is that she's an athlete. And so it, at her time in the upper school, she's been a 12 season athlete, which is always a, an amazing um, accomplishment. But when I think about Claire, I think about uh, the ways in which she has taken advantage of such a broad array of experiences and developed a really wide range of interests um, in her time in the upper school. And so Claire, I'd like to invite you to talk about some of that breadth of opportunity that um, you've been able to take advantage of that I've heard you speak about um, and maybe some of the experiences um, off campus um, that have, uh, have kind of led you to, to some of the um, involvement that you have in leaving the Quaker spiritual life of the school in your uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Um, you're a photographer. Um, you have a lot of interests. And so I'd love to hear a little bit about um, your experiences in the upper school. Yeah, um, thank you. So I, yeah, one of the things that I super value about AFS is all the opportunities that um, become available, like right as you enter. I was a little worried when I came into the upper school that I wouldn't get, be able to get involved or um, have a leadership role until I was like, like an upperclassman. But I was very pleasantly surprised because that's, I think, something that is super great about having a small and more dynamic community is the ability to become a leader, um, like right from the start, um, if you show passion and you really want to. Um, and I think that also shines through in our athletics because there are no like cuts, you can start playing right away, um, which I really valued because I got to meet a lot of people coming in because um, I started playing with the high school when I was in eighth grade. So I was super nervous about that, but it, it turned out really great. And I definitely made some super long lasting connections, um, which I really value about our athletics is like Rich said, it's like collaboration over competition. But this also isn't to say that we have like a strong athletics program, which has definitely grown since I got here. Um, and I'm gonna continue my athletics in college, which was something that I wasn't expecting to do, but Abington has really helped me. Um, be able to help that dream come true to play so, uh, college soccer. Um, and I also think that the, like you can be such a multifaceted like student here at AFS. I have become super involved with things that I never thought I would be able to with like all the time I spend with sports, but they make it super easy to get everybody involved and help everybody become a leader of whatever they're passionate about. Um, and I think that this just helps like prepare you to be a um, like a greater human and an even better person like as you continue your career in college and beyond. And that's something I'm super grateful about for sure. Very good. Thank you so much, Claire. Appreciate it. Um, and Noah. Um, Noah, uh, I think is the longest standing student in this group. Um, he's a lifer. Um, and I took a brief detour to public school his first year of, of high school and, and thankfully came back to us. Um, um, Noah has a lot of interest as well and has shown leadership in a lot of different places. Um, one of the things Noah and I share is a passion for music. And so I really loved seeing him develop as a super accomplished composer and musician. Um, he, um, he just this past year um, was a composer and pit musician in, in a 
really profound um, upper school drama production of Songs for a New World. Um, he had the experience as a young student of watching older students um, uh, play those roles. Um, and then uh, last year he was in that role uh, with a lot of younger students looking up to him. So um, no, I'd love to hear a little bit about that journey for you of, uh, of how you uh, found that yourself in that very significant role in that production last year. Sure, thank you, Rich. Um, yeah, I guess to start off, I'll I'll just you know start by saying that I I think that there are one of the the beautiful things about AFS is that there are certain events that um, the entire community really comes together to enjoy. Um, one of my favorites is Arbor Day, which is it's a day celebrating trees, um, but it's also celebrating the springtime and um, growth and the entire community. You know, K twelve. Um, staff, faculty, everyone comes together and enjoys that event with singing and dancing. Um, and and one of you know an example of that for me too. And and these these events are celebrated um, and attended by pretty much everyone. Also, are the plays and the musicals. Um, so I grew up in AFS. Uh, my mom is a teacher here, and so we would always go see the shows because I I've played music since I was little. Um, and I remember, you know, I remember being really young and, and going to, to various musicals. And I often didn't really know exactly what, what the, the shows were about. Um, sometimes I would go to high school shows and, and be too young to understand them. But what I saw was, was these, you know, upperclassmen um, bonding together over, over this story. Um, and, and that was always aided by incredible music. Um, sometimes the pit musicians were off stage. Sometimes the musicians were under the stage, and that was always super fun to, after the show, you know, creep in under the stage and, and watch them. Um, but but that's always been a huge passion of mine is is seeing how those musicians are contributing to the story um, and working together with the actors and the people off stage. Um, and and you know, I think that for me, um, something that is really has been really meaningful about my AFS experience is that. Um, is that everyone is is kind of interacting like there there's no kind of you go through your education in one grade and then you're kind of isolated from everything else that's happening um i think but with with events like plays you know like i had an opportunity to to look up to those people um those those seniors those juniors those upperclassmen and even middle schoolers when i was in lower school um making music and so by the time that i got into upper school I realized that there were so many different opportunities for me to kind of explore what I was interested in and then apply that um, within the play. So originally I was, you know, doing pit music and, and I started out with that um, for Songs for a New World. But there were actually two arrangements of the show and we were doing one of them. Um, and I decided, you know what, I want to like incorporate parts from the other one because there were guitar parts and string parts and all these other things. Um, so I, you know, I asked the, the pit director and the music director if I could kind of arrange some parts and play them. And it was a, you know, total sure, go ahead, do it. Um, and I think that's kind of across the board at AFS when, when kind of you're inspired by, by something that others are doing and then you, and then you get the idea to do it. Um, there's always opportunities for that. Um, and so that, that play was amazing. Um, and I think part of why it was amazing is because every night we would have smaller children, you know, around lower school age come in the audience and see the show and be, you know, not, not exactly understanding what, what was going on, but like hearing the music and seeing all the actors there um, and coming up and, and saying that we did awesome after the show. And so, you know, I think that for me, AFS is a place where your education doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? It's a place where you are constantly being influenced by those people who are um, in higher grade levels than you, and you're always influencing and you're always inspiring those people in lower grade levels. Um, and that happens in events like Arbor Day. It happens in um, athletics, arts, um, just just really everywhere. But for me, I think that journey, that journey in arts of being able to witness those shows and then being able to produce music and shows that that younger students are, are going to be inspired by is really, um, it, I, I feel that it's, it's awesome to be a part of that continuum. Um, and that, that, that will go, go forward, you know, once we all graduate. 
um, in pretty much all different sectors of, of the AFS community life and school. So yeah. Thank you so much, Noah. Really well said. Uh, this is a very busy and accomplished group of students. I'm really grateful for their time um, and the reflection uh, shared with all of you. I hope that you get a sense of uh, uh, how ambitious this community is, but also how healthy and wholesome. Um, these are folks who are really grounded, uh, well-known, connected, and doing amazing things.